Columbia University in the city of New York has released its 2023-2024 first year supplemental short essay, short answer, short list prompts. And I want to take the time today to detail my thoughts on all of them so that you feel empowered to knock out the supplemental questions or prompts on the Columbia supplement to the common application, or if you're completing them on the coalition application, you can also complete them there. Uh, Columbia University in the city of New York is a very selective institution, and overall they're giving you 700 words with which to work on the supplement to the main application to provide Columbia-specific responses to these very Columbia-esque questions. You really get a sense of Columbia's value system as a result of the questions or prompts that they are asking you on the Columbia supplement. Let's dive right in. Prompt number one asks you to list a selection of text, resources, and outlets that have contributed to your intellectual development outside of academic courses, including but not limited to books, journals, websites, podcasts, essays, plays, presentations, videos, museums, and other content that you enjoy. And you only have 100 words or fewer to respond to this particular prompt, and you need to do so in sort of a run-on sentence slash list. Uh, your response should be uh, basically separated by commas or semicolons. You do not need to have any sort of italics of works of art uh, and or underlines and author names are also not necessary. So you really wanna maximize the number of words you use devoted to specifically showing the text, the resources, the outlets, the museums, the what have you that you feel um, are particularly important for a Columbia to understand about you and your intellectual development outside the classroom over the last several years. There is no right or wrong answer to this. I mean, ultimately, hopefully you've exposed yourself to a diversity of intellectually stimulating sources and resources so that you will be able to fill up all 100 words. That's really the only way in which I think you can really fail this question is if you only use 50 of the words. You know, you have 100 words with which to work, get to at least 90 words, okay? so. Otherwise, as long as you have no spelling errors, uh, this is an insight into your value system. And I encourage you to be authentic and real with it. Uh, and hopefully, again, you've been inspired by a number of things. So getting to 100 words will not be a problem for you at all. But if you feel like you have only 40 words to share and you're really completely out of luck after that point, maybe this would be the time to do some uh, research into particular uh, intellectually stimulating works of, uh, you know, whether it be text or books or journals or websites or podcasts, essays, plays, presentations, videos, museums, what have you, that you could convey to Columbia here as a, as a, as a means by which to get give them insight in the admissions committee about what it is that makes you tick and what, what you value in, in um, intellectual pieces and art, or even things that are not officially considered intellectual, but intellectually uh, spur and, and stimulate you. The next prompt is actually something you have to write in more of a traditional paragraph form. You only, though, have 150 words with which to work on the second one. A hallmark of the Columbia experience is being able to learn and thrive in an equitable and inclusive community with a wide range of perspectives. Tell us about an aspect of your own perspective, viewpoint, or lived experience that is important to you and describe how it has shaped the way you would learn and add, learn from and contribute to Columbia's diverse and collaborative community. Again, you have only 150 words. I incredibly urge you to structure this response like a mini essay. First sentence should be a thesis with an introduction. Several sentences in, you know, basically sentence two through four or five, max, you, you have to show and prove your intro slash thesis and then a conclusion sentence or two max. You, again, only have 150 words, but you still want to set up like a traditional miniature essay. In terms of the content of what you write, again, I encourage you to be authentic. Uh, pick an aspect of your own perspective, viewpoint, or lived experience that you feel really will uh, be something that you're going to be able to harness while on Columbia's campus to both go back to that well to... to 
learn from and also contribute to the community that is very diverse at Columbia in lots of ways um, and collaborate in such a way with that community uh, so that they get a sense that this could be a real value added to have on campus because of what, what it is you're sharing here. Because of the next prompt we're going to talk about, which is the new prompt. This prompt actually is old. This prompt was talked about in my video last year about how to get into Columbia, which I'm also linking below this video so you can watch that full video that really discusses how to get into Columbia University since a number of the essay prompts are very similar last year as they are this year. Uh, but this one's recycled. And I would say, though, because we have a new prompt that focuses more on adversity in a moment, which I will share with you, I would try to pick... Um, an aspect of your own perspective, viewpoint, or lived experience that is not making you look like a victim or like you like an underdog. I would rather you pick something that uh, accentuates a positive uh, experience or aspect or, or perspective, viewpoint that you have had, because otherwise you you'll come across like a Debbie Downer. I think by the end of this uh, Columbia supplement because of the way in which the next prompt is, is framed and worded. So let's go to the next prompt. Uh, in college slash university, students are often challenged in ways that they could not predict or anticipate. It is important to us, therefore, to understand an applicant's ability to navigate through adversity. Please describe a barrier or obstacle that you have faced and discuss the personal quality, skills, or insights you have developed as a result. Again, you have 150 words to respond here. Again, structure it like a mini essay, a one sentence intro slash thesis, a several bo a set sentence body, and then a sentence or two conclusion. The conclusion, as always, should not just restate the thesis. It should go a step beyond the thesis and say something new, intriguing, thought provoking, something nice and new because you don't want to just say some a repetitive uh, intro in the conclusion. That's ridiculous. That's what a lot of very uh, average writers will do. And Columbia is not an average school, and they don't want average applicants or average students. So please do not just restate your thesis in the conclusion. What I would say in terms of my thematic approach to this particular prompt is don't feel as though you need to have been from an underrepresented minority in order to answer it well. Uh, you or, or have had to deal with racism, sexism, uh, other forms of discrimination in order to answer it well. Of course, individuals who have had to face those uh, instances or experiences could very well draw from the well of those or one of those particular experiences or events and be able to describe how maybe they grew stronger as a result of facing that adversity. But it could easily be a learning difference that you have or maybe a very tough relationship you have with a father or mother. Or maybe you don't have a relationship with a father or mother because you don't have a father or mother in your life. It doesn't have to be based off of identity as much as it does have to be based off of just a true adversity. And this requires reflection because not all of us at 18 or 17 years old really know or have thought deeply about a, uh, a hurdle that we've had to overcome or that a, a sort of a, um, a thumbs on the scale against us that we maybe have been facing all of our lives or for some of our lives. But Columbia really wants you to take stock of this. Uh, and reflect on how, A, how would you name it? What would you call it? What is the adversity in question? But then describe how this barrier or obstacle uh, you have faced uh, has particularly in allowed you to grow or develop as a result. Specifically, it reads, again, describe a barrier or obstacle you have faced and discuss the personal quality, skills, or insights you have developed as a result. So you don't want to just focus the response which again is only 150 words on just, I have, you know, my father's not in my life, or uh, I've had dyslexia since I've, you know, my whole life, and just focus and dwell on the fact that this has been really hard. You have to transition in the body to not only specifically, name, you know, the, hopefully you name the actual adversity in the first sentence, which is the thesis, but then the body really quickly has to transition from describing it in a little bit more depth to then transitioning to reflecting on in the skills, the qualities, the insights you have developed and that you will therefore bring with you to Columbia as a result of having this challenge or adversity once or persistently in your life. So you have to sort of, again, dwell on the positive, make lemonade out of lemons 
in the second half of the body at the latest, if not earlier in the body, so that the reader of this response for Columbia really gets a sense that you've harnessed something not so positive and you've turned it into something positive. Uh, and again, this is sort of like finding the silver lining in a cloud or making lemonade out of lemons. Make sure you make the lemonade. Make sure you don't just leave the essay and finish the essay with a bucket full of lemons. You've got you to gotta turn it into lemonade. Uh, and so that's really a very important key. Do not become overwhelmed and do not overwhelm the reader with just the adversity itself. Make sure you transition to showing how you are better than ever as a result of having gone through the adversity uh, or maybe you're still struggling with the adversity, but you're stronger as a result of this particular adversity that you choose. And this, again, is why I don't want you to be negative Nelly on the response to the previous question about uh, an aspect of your lived experience or viewpoint or perspective that uh, you're going to bring with you to Columbia, because if you're too negative there, that combined with this one would be like a one-two gut punch in terms of negativity on a Columbia application. Yes, it's New York. Yes, it's very urban. Yes, uh, the culture there is is focused on sort of psychoanalyzing you quite a bit, clearly. Uh, but we can we can try to be as positive as possible with the overall tenor of your overall supplement to Columbia, which I think will be a net positive for your review uh, in the committee. And then finally, there are two more questions, believe it or not, on the supplement to Columbia's common or coalition application, and they're much more straightforward. Number uh, one of the following two is, why are you interested in attending Columbia University? We encourage you to consider the aspects that you find unique and compelling about Columbia. Again, you have 150 words. I would summarize those in the first sentence slash thesis, so you introduce them. Then the body, three to four sentences, shows why you are interested in attending Columbia in more depth and really just developing the aspects of Columbia that you find unique and compelling and make sure they are specific to Columbia. Make sure that you could not just write this about Michigan or Cornell or BU or Penn or Georgetown or any other school that you would consider Chicago. Do not write something that could be replicable. Make sure all of your sentences are as Columbia specific as very possible. But also note that there's going to be another question right afterward that's asking specifically about your um, preferred area of study at Columbia within engineering or the college. And it's important not to have anything in this response that is repeated in that response. So it's extremely important that you don't get too into the weeds on your area of concentration, your major, your area of study in this response, because you're going to do it in the next final response. So instead, this is more of a fit at a 300, sort of a, at a 36,000 feet level, uh, whereas the next response is going to be much more in the weeds with the major you're going to pursue, the course of study that you're going to pursue, the area of study you're going to pursue, as they say in the prompt, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. So just make sure that uh, the, the things that you are mentioning that you are attracted to at Columbia, the aspects that you find unique and compelling about Columbia in this response are very much geared toward the community at Columbia uh, and and all of those sort of subjective, very qualitative aspects. Uh, you can, of course, focus on quantitative aspects if that's important to you, uh, but they should be sort of excised from and removed from specifically your course of study. They can, of course, refer to the core curriculum because most students at Columbia engage in that, of course, and so it should not simply be in the weeds with the major. That's the big thing you want to avoid with this response. Again, the conclusion should just not restate the thesis. It should say something new. So definitely keep that in mind. And then finally, your response to the final prompt. Here's the final prompt. What attracts you to your preferred areas of study at Columbia College or Columbia Engineering? And again, this is you have 150 words for this one. Structure it the same way you've been structuring all the others that I've just laid out for you. Intro sentence with thesis, which really summarizes very quickly, almost like an abstract to a research article, what it is this short essay is going to dive into. Uh, and then in the body itself, the next few sentences, you're going to then dive into it and show specific Columbia details about why you want to study that major, not just in general, because again, that's something you could write to any other college you're applying to, but you should be able to say and show why you want to major in that area at Columbia, why you want to pursue that course of study at Columbia. That makes you 
really have to engage in some research before you draft this because you need to maybe know a professor's name or two, a particular unique study program abroad, on campus, an institute of research, research opportunities that only exist at Columbia, uh, living learning opportunities, community service opportunities that will augment your study, other internship research research externship opportunities that you will be able to augment your specific course of study with. So again, you really need to get into the weeds with this response. I know you only have 150 words, and I'm sure if you really love Columbia, you could probably write a thousand words, but try to really focus it in on the one to three max, and three may even be too much, but one to three specific elements max that are specifically drawing you to the, this course of study, this area of study at Columbia. Uh, and Again, the focus is all on making sure that you really underscore that your, your values align with the way Columbia's values uh, play out vis-a-vis -vis that particular area of study and, and the opportunities you'll be able to have on the campus at Columbia that will augment that area of study, that course of study for you, as opposed to if you studied it at Chicago or Michigan or Brown or wherever else you may be applying to this particular admission cycle. My name is Craig Meister. I'm also known as the College Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about me and how you can work with me during the college application process. And of course, share my name, share this video, give it a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to my channel, and I try to produce these videos whenever I have the chance. Though again, this time of year, I'm often very busy working one-on-one -on -one with students. So starting in August, I stopped producing these as frequently as I produce them earlier in the cycle or the year because I'm so very busy with students applying to college from August through November in particular, but also December. My name again is Craig Meister. Stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, good luck in getting in to Columbia University in the city of New York.